Hello and welcome to another episode of The Defenders on Sunset TV. And in this episode, we are looking at a unique achievement of our country's national security initiatives. And this is the shipbuilding and submarine building initiatives of the Indian Navy in association with the defense public sector undertakings and India's several shipyards. And this is quite remarkable considering the fact that in 1964, the country set up the Central Design Office. And since then, India has produced 19 different classes of ships with more than 130 platforms and several other initiatives, including medium and small technologies which assist our whole maritime effort. And to that effect, we have today a very large shipbuilding initiative, which should be the envy of almost all developing countries. And to explain that, we have with us Dr. Vishwapati Trivedi, who is a former secretary for the Ministry of Shipbuilding in the Government of India, and will be able to tell us the issues that the government looks at in terms of capital expenditure and the initiatives in shipbuilding. And we have a very knowledgeable proponent of Atmanirbhar Bharat and to that effect, the shipbuilding initiatives and a commander of high standing in the Indian Navy, Vice Admiral Raman Puri, who I had first the opportunity to see in uniform as CISC, as the head of integrated defense staff headquarters. And later, he has now become a distinguished fellow at the VIF. So I'll start with you, Admiral Puri, sir. How would you categorize that the Indian Navy has become from a buyer's Navy to a builder's Navy? Um, it's been a long journey. Started off with a decision which I remember taken during Admiral Nanda's time when we said we will build, we want to build our own ships. And the first ship we built was the Leander class. There was a whole yeah. setup that was made. Nilgiri and was the name, was it? Nilgiri was I built. The first ship Nilgiri was built. It was a Leander class ship. Uh, of course, in that ship, we would say that uh, if we talk of the indigenous content, well, the design was we had the design was bought out. The but the shipbuilding industry, the hull was the the the, the skills in the yards came up with that Gee. industry mm. and we understood what sort of ancillaries are required to put mm. that industry mm. through. Mm. So from then onwards, uh, I must say that uh, the, the, the Navy has the only organization which has got a ship design uh, uh, a directorate uh, and with, this, with the director general ship uh, DG SND ship design. And a DG, S and DG, who is one looking after the submarines, the other is looking after ships. Okay. So, these two directors had come up and we, uh, with both IIT Kharagpur and IIT Delhi, built up a cadre of naval architects who could undertake this task of uh, ship construction. Okay. You know, I, I, the, the, the the constructor in a sh of the ship who really designs the ship from concept design to detailed concept design and lot of lot of things that goes on into it uh, is the backbone because he has to understand not only the outer hull, how he's going to construct the ship, but how, what is going to be the air conditioning load, what is going to be the thermal load on the ship, what is what sort of propulsion power will it require? All these things are, are have to be un, uh, have to be understood by this gentleman who's going to be the ship constructor. Of course, he's he's assisted by, or inputs to him come from various directorates in the naval headquarters itself. There, there is a um, there's a ship systems directorate. There is a uh, what you call, uh, call my, my memory is a little becoming a little short. 
but the engineers give their inputs, the elect electrical people okay. give their so, inputs. So, so there is a whole system in place. There is a whole system has So come it up, is now giving results, the bottom which line. Which is now giving results. I will, what results have been given and what we still need to do, we will talk of. You talk of. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tivedi, sir, uh, you know, being at the apex in the government, you would have seen some of these things at the macro level, which Admiral is talking about. There is one area that I have picked up where we needed a little more clarification from you. That the private sector seems to be making desperate efforts to get deeper into the shipbuilding business. And we have companies like LNT, RNEL, Pipawa Defense and others who have been trying to get into this core area of shipbuilding, but they are still kept in the periphery now. Am I right with this assumption or it is because there is already so much happening with the government of India controlled shipbuilding process in the dockyards and shipyard that there is not much room for these people to enter. Thank you. Uh, both the things, both the things I would say that uh, there is often this uh, discussion that uh, the, the biggest orders within the country for shipbuilding ships of various sizes starting from small tugs to big ships G. even the uh, even the vikrant mm. uh, is, is all from government of india mm. there is uh, an inherent uh, built-in uh, uh, methodology which lands most of these orders with the government shipyards mm -hmm. and there are uh, and, and they do a, you know they do a pretty good job i mean the output comes out things are made then comes the other side, you know, there is, uh, there is a whole lot of private sector, which is, uh, now India has, uh, uh, has, has some status in the, in the world in terms of uh, uh, its uh, gross tonnage, yeah, and there is a position that India holds, so we have, but we are not very high in terms of ownership of private ships, so that uh, in, uh, sector needs to be given a boost. Government has done a lot in terms of, I've seen in the last five, six years, uh, <clears throat> uh, I wouldn't say when, uh, when I was secretary shipping, since then also, uh, a lot of subsidies, custom duty rejigs, uh, uh, GST rejigs on ancillaries and parts and all sorts of things have been done to create an environment for the private sector to step in. Okay. But uh, there remains uh, a lot yet to be done because it's not getting traction uh, the way it could. Just a quick, quick yeah. interjection. Would you say in all honesty that this process is slow because the DPSUs have their own team of people, there is a certain nepotism there, therefore they don't want any extra interference from outside which will upset the existing equi equilibrium? I don't think DPSUs have any such uh, okay. feeling uh, or any such character. I mean, they do their work, whatever is assigned, they were pretty, pretty you know, the, uh, the uh, several dockyards and shipyards under the Navy and other defense uh, production ministry are pretty professional. I mean, they, they, they are given a job, they do the job. But the point is, not all jobs can be given to them. Some should be opened up to the private sector. Precisely. Yeah. So now there is a policy of, uh, you know, at least no order can be exported unless all the Indian shipyards refuse. So first comes the defense PSUs, then comes the private sector shipyards. Okay. And okay. with a, you know, right of first refusal stays with the Indian shipyards. Okay. So that protection has been given. But the private sector still has to compete. Okay. Uh, so I'll come back yeah, because sure. this is a very important point you made about exports and I'll come back to you because you'll be able to enlighten us further. Admiral, sir, it is said that out of some 51 ships and submarines for which orders have been placed at various shipyards, 49 are being constructed in India. And apart from individual skills, naval projects also lead to the creation of capacities within the shipyards. Now, would you say that this capacity building is built in into how the Navy diverts a 
reasonable chunk of its budget towards capital acquisitions and instead of buying it from outside it looks at investing money back into the indian economy because some people have said that close to every rupee that is invested in it is ploughed back into the indian economy how far is that true no i as far as um capacity building in the shipyard is concerned that's a ongoing and a regular process i mean the uh, the ship construction methods that were there in the 60s have changed today to the mm-hmm. uh, in different methods of constructing ships uh, what the shipyards can meet from their own internal resources and i think they do meet uh, some uh, quite a bit from their own internal resources also but uh, there is uh, i suppose i i won't be i don't know the exact details but there is a funding given for that purpose mm-hmm. but um, uh, my own view is that the that it is correct that we are building 49 ships out of whatever ships that are there in the pipeline and the designs that are coming up are the most up to date and they would compete with anybody in the world we have achieved a lot in terms of what i would call there are three elements in a ship the float the move and the fight in the float element we are done very well in the sense even now we have developed our own steel it takes a lot to get, develop a steel and to certify it and then to say this can so we have now developed our own steel for both for ships and submarines so that, that is one earlier we used to rely on and you know every time a ship goes into dock you got to cut the plate replace them because we keep these ships for 30 35 40 years at times so there is regular maintenance so that that is a good measure that then in terms of the uh, auxiliaries that go into the ship the mm. piping the mm. valves the everything mm. all that largely is available now have been has been built up and the naval standards are very different from what you will apply elsewhere so the the standards that to which our uh, ancillaries have to be built also are very high and there is an investment to it there is a cost to it where we have not moved that fast is in what i would call the move element huh? move yes move means the main propulsion we has we require gas turbines and i think time has come that uh, most of the marine gas turbines are derivative of of aero gas turbines and i think um, we had started a project i don't know what happened to it but it is time that we move on like we are doing with the amca going on and building our own uh, 125 kilo newton engine there is no reason that even with what kaveri has achieved already with that it should be feasible to get a, get ourselves an in, a, a, a gas turbine of say 15 16 megawatts which will be enough to uh, run um, any thing i think up to even a, a, for a carriers that may not be sufficient but for for definitely for frigates and uh, destroyers uh, you could do with that uh, sort of a gas turbine it'll take us 5 6 years or maybe um, to develop one and right, do right. something right. but that that is that is one area we need to tackle because you can't have a your main propulsion coming from somewhere and then uh, working on it the third element is uh, although mind you the uh, the gas turbine we are using are very reliable i am not saying that they are not reliable they are very reliable what we are doing finally is the fight element and in the fight element you have combat systems you have weapon systems you know electronic warfare systems early warning systems now in all these areas i think we have reached a stage where we don't need to import any radar from anybody okay They, 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 it's only uh, i won't say that is <coughs> gone into our ships all of them but coming henceforth there should be no need to import any radars there should be no need to import any electronic warfare systems even that that is the state today <coughs> um co- combat management systems um, the, you know we set up a organization which though under the drdo but it is largely uh, the navy takes a large interest in that particular organization mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which has helped us to make combat systems and in, uh, you know integrate mm-hmm. so there is a large effort gone into the fight element coming but we have uh, some i mean missiles have now come 
guns we still uh, underwater we have done fairly well and here i must say even the drdo has played a big part in the sense especially okay. in the underwater area whether it was our sensors whether it is the torpedoes and all that uh, they are playing they are playing a big part and i think it is uh, it, it will be not very far away when we have the complete underwater suite coming from our own industry so that 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 sort of effort is there and it should take place and i okay. think uh, only in the submarine side i would say that having built i mean it's now in the public domain we have built a nuclear submarine is the most complicated thing to build is a nuclear submarine and um, more very i mean the the stringent in, uh, in in quality control in a nuclear submarine is much higher than even on surface ships having done that i see no reason why we shouldn't be building our own conventional submarine also just a quick add on hmm. nuclear submarines if we've already built hmm. there was some talk about you know just take slightly veering off into the orcus arrangement where america is helping australia build a nuclear submarine with british help hmm. where is it that our nuclear submarine initiative is wanting in terms of what they are building up there i am just asking as a layman a I nuclear mean, submarine is a nuclear submarine as a layman submarine. because there are a lot of classified information i can't talk about but as a layman i would say that uh, we lack nothing uh, it's a question of um, what you call self belief uh, and uh, having done this left to me i would be building more <laughs> even uh, nuclear submarines for uh, i would call them nuclear attack submarines we are building the ballistic missile submarine i would like to build attack submarines um, in a brazilian analysis for their navy sometimes uh, i forget the date but the analysis is on the net anybody can go and see it the rough equivalence uh in deployment i mean there are many air issues that come up in deployment of a submarine but one rough equivalence they have withdrawn that if you take search moving from one search to another and all that the brilliant brazilian's calculation was that for a for every one nuclear submarine you would need three conventional submarines with an aip in it okay so i'll i'll so, cut you i'll cut you there <laughs> and i'll ask the good secretary uh, two questions one is a short one based on this in terms of costs roughly what is the cost of a conventional submarine versus a nuclear submarine and so if you are building 333 in those digits why don't we reduce it to 111 nuclear submarine so there's that one question and the second question is about exports but once you answer this then i'll ask you that yeah about the costs you see i uh, on the civil side and i would say Uh, commander sir has spoken on the navy side but uh, while that is necessary in the maritime strengthening and maritime security of a nation it's not sufficient you need to have the private sector and the other civil i would say civil support and civil construction facilities which go hand in hand you see america has what is called the jones act of 1920 they don't even allow any foreign built ship on their coast they don't allow they have to be made in america i mean they do trade and all that that's but the coastal rights which is called the cabotage rights are not with uh, any foreign built ship so to that extent of course it's a little bit too early for india to say but coming back to your question on cost the broad thing about the cost differential if you were to make a ship in china and to make a ship in india that i mean uh, is is about 25 30% really yeah so right. what india has done in terms of a civil uh, and the financial you know there is a, a subsidy that has been operating in india there was one earlier scheme which ended in 2007 but the government again started another scheme in 2016 which is a 20% subsidy so th- that is the, how the 20% number came out and uh, uh, it used to be so a lot of things the government has done to to guard its uh, uh, civil uh, naval uh, uh, maritime uh, and the ship building industry but a point i would like to say in your forum here is that you see it's not just the government who can pump in money and get these things done there is this uh, issue of entrepreneurship these civil 
um, uh, orders are driven by demand. Could be domestic demand, it could be uh, international demand. Mostly it is international demand. Of course, the Indian uh, maritime industry is also growing, but I don't think there's a big demand from, there are a few shipping corporation of India and there, on the private sector side, there is uh, the Great Eastern Shipping Company. They are the big private public uh, sector. They're not buying so much. But yes, the world is buying. World is trying to build. So if we can beat them in the cost advantage, I think that's... So what I was coming to say was that the government having done its part, the private sector has to deliver. But how do they deliver? There are a whole lot of things which uh, my personal experience is the subsidy doesn't flow in time. Mm. Mm. Why does it not flow in time? Because there's a lot of ifs and buts there. We can discuss it's a long subject why it happens. Yeah. But there are certain non-financial regulatory and control issues which have to be relaxed mm. in the system so that everything starts working. I think there's still a lot of uh, a lot of things which don't move. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, I just want yeah. to say, just my second question, because we are running out of time. Yeah. I just want to understand from you that I believe the Indian Maritime and the Navy and the Government of India have created certain initiatives with friendly countries in which we have been able to add capacities to countries such as Seychelles, Maldives, Sri Lanka, etc. Briefly, sir, what are those capacities? Uh, you see, about Sri Lanka, I can say they are largely dependent on Chinese. They've actually even let out one of their bigger ports to the Chinese know, to run. I know that. So, uh, what do you do in a port? You, uh, you have a dockyard, I mean, a shipbuilding. Uh, it's not that orders from Sri Lanka have fallen in the lap of the Indian maritime or Indian shipbuilders. I don't think that's happened. It may have been some tugs or some other PSVs or LSVs or some other vessels which may have done, but not on a large scale. As far as Seychelles and Mauritius is concerned, I think we are probably, it's just one-way traffic. We build and we give it to them or we, uh, whatever we do. Okay. But uh, it's... Yeah, because uh, yeah. they, they have, don't have the capacity yeah, so it's just on a size aid, of the it's country. It's an aid uh, rather than uh, okay, trade. Okay. So, so that puts to rest a query I had in my mind. Admiral, sir, last question. And that is that the Honorable President of India, at a recent visit for the, you know, to, at Vishakapatnam, where he talked about the importance of the Indian shipbuilding initiatives, the Make in India initiatives, and to that extent, he complimented the Navy for what all it's achieved with its Make in India initiative. It has always been the case. So, what is new? Uh, new will be, I suppose, um, I look at it, uh, the Make in India initiatives, which is new, is now coming into our combat systems. Gee. And in the sense that uh, uh, we, we will have our own, um, up to now, surface to surface missiles we were buying. Yes. We probably have them going in our, our own ships. Uh, Brahmos is no secret. Yeah, it is yeah. it is there. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very yeah. good missile that has come into our system. So, Navy always had this uh, make in India thing. But um, I think time has now come to say that when it comes to sens underwater sensors, surface radars, EW systems, they will all just be, I mean, like the US says that no foreigner will come and put it over here. We have to just say they will be Indian. Yeah. And this would, this would apply also to the Vikrant, which the Honorable President was referring I, I to. I can't uh, say because, you know, when ship is built, they are built around systems and what, what is going to be the state of Vikrant, I am not in touch with. But uh, I can say about Vikrant. I've, yeah, I've please, please, there. please, sir. Uh, it's been built in Cochin shipyard. Mm -hmm. It uh, runs uh, uh, along with the Ministry of Shipping. Uh, there have been delays in building it, but it's uh, to the extent of 85 to 90 percent all indigenous. Okay, so, yeah. so on, on that happy mm -hmm. notes, I'm terribly mm -hmm. short of time, but I mean, I, I found it very enlightening hearing you both. And uh, clearly, Navy is leading the country's defense, Make in India initiatives. And to that extent, I think people like you both deserve a lot of credit. And so do so many other hands who are unspoken of, unheard of, but they continue to toil 
in India's interest. Thank you very much and thanks for watching. Until our next episode, Thank you. goodbye.